Hey, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR, and we've got your 2050 climate forecast for the Northwest. This region has been defined in the government reports as three states, Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. This past summer, in particular, summer of 2021, we saw heat waves in this region that were not predicted to recur for maybe another decade. So the question isn't so much what's going to happen, because it is happening, as what are these changes going to do and what are they going to look like moving forward? The Northwest has a lot of communities working in natural resource extraction and management. Whether we're talking about forestry, agriculture, or fishing, this region supplies many of the raw materials the rest of America needs. Everyone who cares about these natural resource industries is aware of the work the people of the Northwest have put into making these resources sustainable. It's been heroic. And it's that kind of teamwork, that kind of sustainable development, that's going to let this region get through the changes that are coming. In the Northwest, we're looking at a general warming trend, and that's going to impact the snowpack, and thus the landscapes. That warming trend is also going to cause significant changes in the sea. But more so than many other regions, the real core of the challenge for the Northwest is unpredictability. Unpredictability is hard to plan for. Since 2015, especially when we saw the first of the big heat waves in the Northwest, that unpredictability has been felt in the region. We feel it in our bodies. It's hard to know what to expect. And that's kind of where things are going to be for the foreseeable. Any given year, you could be dealing with a lot of rain. And I mean a lot of rain, like that atmospheric river type rain. Or you could be dealing with a pretty serious drought. You could have wildfires in forests that are historically very wet, not historically fire managed forests. You could have heat waves similar to the 2021 heat wave. They're not going to get a lot hotter than we saw in 2021, but those are hot enough. They already caused substantial loss of human life. So this situation is serious, and we're looking at that seriousness already today in the Pacific Northwest. That lack of predictability, it's going to have impacts on natural resources, of course. And the best way to prepare for a lack of annual predictability, year-over-year -year predictability, is to build flexibility into the system at a high level. And like I said, it's already happening. The people of this region have shown that they have what it takes. They have the flexibility to make it. They've shown they're willing to divert water from agriculture to save natural resources. They've shown they'll make every effort. They'll reconfigure a landscape. They'll revive a whole watershed in an effort to save the salmon runs. Those are the kind of efforts that we need if we're going to keep the natural resources of this area, which are so economically important, not even to mention their cultural and spiritual significance. Outlooks for the marine fisheries off the northwest coast, they're very challenging. But a bright spot, if current trends in agriculture hold, there's a real opportunity for inland agriculture to diversify and begin planting more high-profit specialty crops because there will be warmer weather, there will be less intense freeze in the winter. The wine industry in particular is likely to move up into the northwest from northern California. The potential for grapes it is really quite excellent. It is the biggest economic bright spot for the region, in my opinion. It's worth investigating if you're interested in that kind of thing. Inland agriculture in this region does have access to some aquifers that haven't been abused. They have the potential for sustainable use. So this availability of backup sources of water, of water sources that can allow you to be really flexible in an unpredictable climate, major bright spots for the region. Similarly, the forest industries of this region, we already see a lot of managed forests, and they're well-managed. They're sustainable forests. As these industries look to adapt to the future of the region, there's going to be a need to shift the types of trees the industry replants for future harvest. But there are types of trees that are going to be able to be grown. There are trees that have really high tolerance for water stress, which means they can handle a really wet year and then a really dry year. And there's trees that will appreciate the warmer winters coming to the region. So there are ways to prepare, and these are changes that are going to need to start in our plant nurseries to allow us to grow the forests of tomorrow. The natural resources of the Northwest are crucial for America, for American stability, and for American security. We are all, all of us in America, so fortunate that in this region, we have people who have already been working forward, they've already been looking forward to the challenges the next few decades they're going to bring. It's because of their stewardship their embrace of their natural heritage, that the outlook for this region is a net positive. These people, they were able to listen 
So those in the region who remembered what had life had been, they were able to envision what life could be. When I read the reports for the Northwest, more than for any other region, I am inspired. I am filled with appreciation and admiration for the strength and resiliency of the communities in the Northwest. There is a lot the rest of the nation can learn from you all about censoring on what you value and finding out how much you can save. In an unpredictable future, I think there's one thing in this region we can rely on, and that is the people of the American Northwest. This is Dr. Scherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe. Help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.